Yeah, uh, some of these game shows that have replaced E3 and other shows that we're used to when it has not been COVID. Um, I don't know, man. Like they've been letting me down a little bit. And normally, I'm I'm overly positive and optimistic, and sometimes I I go into straight denial <laughs> when I know <laughs> something is bad deep down. Yeah. Um, the PS5 show was good. Um, mm-hmm. Granted, I'm a PS fan and I'm a Sony fan and all that kind of stuff. So naturally I'm going to be a little bit more gravitated to that, but, uh, it was good. It was, it was decent. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say that it blew my socks off cause it definitely did not. Um, I, I think a lot of folks feel the same way, um, about some of these shows. I mean, even when E3 was happening, it's not always that you see stuff that you're hoping to see and that can be a little bit disappointing, but right. you know, decent. There's a few games that I was interested in. I barely even remember the names of them. Um, some, some of the games look like they'll never come out. <laughs> uh, I think at the same time, I am still most excited for the Demon Souls remake. Um, mm. that was an interesting one and I'm not going to do a deep dive on this because I could go on for a while, but I will say that, um, I was really excited when I, I saw it happen live and I was like, oh my God, it's finally happening. Um, I was under the impression that it was going to be a remaster, but it is a full remake, and okay. uh, once I learned that, I was like, all right, you know, but I, I, I started getting a little bit um, nervous and I did some research as the days went on because, of course, articles were flooding the Internet days later. And uh, it has been confirmed that not only it's a remake, but it really ha- is being built from the ground up by Bluepoint, which I have full trust in because they I've played a lot of their games and their remasters and remakes are, are very good. What else um, have they done? So the thing with Blue Point, and maybe I have to do more research, and I'm sure uh, people are going to help me after listening to this, but they did the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, and those okay. were just remasters, and they did a, a real bang up job with those. They also did the Shadow of the Colossus. Now this is where I don't even know when to say remaster or remake because I'm hearing both for that one. I'm under the impression that it's just a remaster, but apparently it's a remake with that. Um, oh, they also okay. did. I forget what else now. Um, crap. Yeah, I forget what else. They, they've done a handful. Uh, I think they've done about like eight games total. So it, okay. it's not been that many, but they are good at what they do. And uh, I do trust them to take care of this. But my nervousness is is like the rest of the Souls community. And I, I should really actually say the Demon Souls community. Um, not that they're completely separate, but there are... There is like a sort of sect of, of Demon Souls fans that are very, very, um, they just really adore the, the first game. And it is a very special game with a very special, unique atmosphere. And basically the consensus is, is when people started doing analysis of, or doing an analysis of this remake trailer, they started saying, wow, you know, this does not look like it's capturing the same atmosphere that we we found in the first game, which is dark, oppressive, foggy, had mm. a certain kind of glow to it. And this remake looks like fresh and, and almost bright when it shouldn't be. And uh, that seems to be the case. But, you know, it's one trailer. Who knows when the game's even coming out because there's no release date. So I'm just trying to stay optimistic, but I can't help but kind of resonate or relate to a lot of those other fans of Demon Souls because uh, it is a very special game in that series. It's what started it all. And uh, if you haven't played it, it's hard to understand some of that, uh, um, you know, skepticism that that's falling around the remake. Have uh, they shown like familiar looking areas in the trailers? Like, did you, yes. so you've seen the, the remake trailer and said "Ooh, that's xyz yes yes so they, okay. they've done a very faithful job at least <clears throat> showing some areas and some bosses and and whatnot um to make people realize okay not only is this absolutely demon souls but it just is obviously remade and it, it's more than a graphical update it looks like they've really kind of reworked some of how some of how the the areas look and and some how some of the enemies look and that's fine, um, but again, it's it's like you're kind of tampering with something that is is so um, special to so many folks that it does naturally worry me a little bit. Uh, mm. FF Seven Remake is is an absolute remake. There is a lot that's familiar, but there's, there's a lot that's massively different. Yeah. Um, I, so you know, that's a good I, thing. 
from what I've heard with it, it's basically a matter of, yep, hey, we took the foundation, but this is not the same game at all. Yeah, I mean, what they should do with with remakes in in certain ones, perhaps, is maybe stop calling them a remake, call them like a reimagination. And some may argue that, well, hey, like, wake up, dummy, it's a remake, you know, Mm. define that word, word. And I understand that, but you know, a lot of these remakes are complete reimaginations, and I feel feel yeah. like there is a little bit of a difference there. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of like you know taking a movie and you know basing it on another movie or based on a true story or something like that. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sometimes that stuff is gold, and I think that FF Seven remake is gold. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, coming out of that show, it was like the only game I really felt excited about. Uh, yeah. Horizon, whatever they're calling it now. Um, uh, yeah, I don't remember, but I want to play that. Yeah, I mean, it looks amazing. There was a couple sequences that may have been just cutscenes, but it looked pretty breathtaking. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm very, very excited for that. Um, and again, a few other things, but there was nothing that really grabbed me. Um, uh, and then, there was a one game called Stray, I think it was called, where you're playing yes. as a kid playing as a cat in, like, this neo-noir kind of uh, world. Yes, um, that looks neat. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you're like, oh, fuck, are, are you actually playing as the cat? Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe I, I guess you just buy that. yourself Fancy Feast at that point. I don't know. <laughs> um, horrible joke, but... <laughs> oh, God. It's days... got robots and shit, you know? Yeah. Uh, days later, I think it was, like... I think it was a few days later, it was like a week later, um, the Future Game Show came out. That was on a Saturday or Sunday. I think it was a Saturday. Anyway, I tuned in uh, kind of last minute because I was outside reading or something, and I, I grabbed my phone and I saw somebody, um, I think it was on Twitch or something. Yeah, it was, I was watching a Twitch stream on my laptop outside, and the guy was like, oh, there's a, there's a game show. It's called the future of game show and it debuts in like 15 minutes. So I, I went inside and I watched it on, on the big screen and uh, man, what a letdown. Um, I'm not sure if it was supposed to be like an indie game show, mm-hmm. but I don't think so. Um, it could be totally wrong, but just what I saw was just, it was just bad. And I, I don't know if it was just me. And I, I spoke about this briefly in discord, but there was just weird games being shown that all looked like Xbox original alpha games, which was obviously not a good thing. Um, hmm. A lot of them looked like, you know, independent studios just making small little cutesy sort of games. And it was just very odd um, considering the title is future game show. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. You know, I couldn't help but think, you know, like why are all these shows debuting games that just don't, look like next gen games and again i understand that there are going to be games that come out on the ps4 the ps5 the ps6 you know that are going to look not like triple a games because not every game is going to look like horizon zero dawn i get that but right i don't know i think in a somewhat of a selfish way i was expecting to just i want my fucking socks blown off dude you know i, I want to be blown away mm-hmm. we're, we're having expensive systems coming out in a matter of months really and uh, I, I, I just feel like there still hasn't really been anything that has really blown my mind, except for that one tech uh, demo that they did for the PS5. It was like a Tomb Raider type of sequence. It was mm, an yeah, unknown yeah. game, the one that we shared a couple weeks ago. Now, now that looked like a PS5 game. It looked it like a, a next generation game. And I don't know if we've lost touch with what that's supposed to look like, or maybe if that stuff is coming out later. I know Joe mentioned that some of that stuff will be debuted potentially later this year or next. But, uh, you know, show me Assassin's Creed Valhalla gameplay at 4K60. You know, like, that's what I'm waiting for here. Like, let's see, you know, uh, something like Ghost of Tsushima at 4K60 on a PS5, like, gameplay. And maybe we're not there yet, and maybe I'm just being a little bit impatient. But I'm not going to really back down from this too much because I just feel like, you know we're a little bit we ought to see something at this point that is like next gen quality 